Keep smiling. Hello world, it's a pro tools, now I'm living, I make a living. I'm doing what I love and everything was written in stone. Now my women are fitted in clothes, the fifth and info. Oh, look at that from Mikel Rijka as he fires that gun. That, uh, that went out of the way. Next up, we have Michael Reihardt from the Czech Republic. He's a multiple Czech champion. He's got a thousand horsepower, and he's definitely one of the craziest people I've ever met in drifting. He's always smiling. He had, I saw him on one of those, uh, one of those one-wheel scooter things that you know, those kind of hoverboards. Oh yes. Yeah, eating a full lunch with a knife and fork on one of them, scooting by me there earlier on. I was like, this guy, this is the guy I'd be worried about if I was going up against. He's wild. He's unpredictable. He's also one of the the coolest guys on the grid, but he's coming in very fast into that first corner, but dropping out of that outer zone initially. Yeah, coming in hard and. It just cost him, as he said, he didn't get that line fully right, wasn't able to fulfill that outer zone as he dials on big angle and again, just not fulfilling outer zone five now as he tries to finish it in style. Hooks it up nicely with the wall here and just... Is there a better shot in drifting than that final section here in, in, in Riga? And this year looks even better with the whole grandstand behind it. Looks amazing. Michael Reihardt definitely buried the car into the wall halfway through the end of the zone. As advertised, Michael Reihardt does not leave the car in one piece for Hall of Qualifying. Just drops it. I mean, as you said, he gets around the track, but is he really getting all the zones? Not particularly. He's kind of flirting with them. The line is pretty good, but he's not precise. And this little bit of braking here, I think, hurt him a little bit on that outer zone as well. And then as he transitioned back again, it was a little shallow. I'm not saying I want Michael Reihardt to push too hard because we all know what happens then. But what I'm saying is just, yeah, could be a little bit more fluid. Um, not a bad run, though. Nothing too crazy. Just watch this here. Hits the wall a little heavier than he'd like. Had to readjust on the front brake just to... But again, look how good a driver he is. That he can hit the wall, just touch the front brake and bring it back online again. So Michael Reihardt, with all the experience, I'm not sure he's going to get all of the scoring here. No, and I mean, we're being very particular as well. I mean, these runs are all crazy in their own right. A 72 on the board drops in for Michael Reithart. That'll put him in seventh position temporarily. In the scheme of things, not a bad score. Certainly not. He was perfect on the line, but not enough angle. And the, dry, uh, the judges give me a little nod there saying that, Dave, you're not talking rubbish. You might even understand what's going on for once, which is always rare. We go back to the start line. Man, that's never short of angle. It's Michael Reihardt from the Czech Republic. But his first run, a 72. He sits exactly on the drop zone in 32nd position. I don't think that's safe enough, Eddie. He's got to improve. He certainly does, Dave. And you know what? He'll be expecting himself to improve. Not going to be comfortable being right on the drop zone like that. He's more used to being way up the order. And he certainly has the stuff to do it now if Michael Reihardt can find something special this run. He's coming for it. Big speed, full commitment as he fills those outer zones now to the final section. Nice transition back across and into that final outer zone as Michael Reihardt puts on a clinic there. You can't see anything on the cameras. He's just smoked the whole place out. And Michael Reihardt, you can see even the Finnish fans are cheering for Michael Reihardt from the Czech Republic because they know how much entertainment he brings to this championship. Well, that was a big do-or-die run. He went right to the edge of the circuit. And from where I'm sitting, Eddie, he did a much better job than the first run. I'm just reading his notes here, Dave, and I'm shocked that he has only ever managed two top eights in Drift Masters, which is astonishing for a driver of his of his talent and uh, you know, it only shows the competitive nature of this championship it and how really tough does. it is. I mean a top eight at Drift Masters is like winning two finals of a national championship. That's the way I would look at it. I mean it's a huge step up. Even drivers come to this championship and say if I got a top sixteen, I'm happy with the weekend. So it goes to show that nobody's taking any of these tasks lightly as Michael Reihardt puts in a phenomenal run. He comes so fast into this wall run at the end. I mean I thought he was going straight in the wall. And uh, as advertised the tire killer does exactly that on his second run in qualifying. An eighty six from Michael Reihardt puts him up into 11th position. You can see that he stayed uh, just off screen. He could say to look at his own score on the screen. And he almost jumped straight out of the car with excitement. He was so happy with that one. And uh, Michael Reihardt, always full of emotion. And uh, he lets his driving do the against Michael Reihardt, Holland versus Czech Republic. And uh, two guys that are now looking at other runs constantly saying, what's the right approach? To me, it's got to be the shallow line with the handbrake. It's got to be, I mean, I just, it's not what, I never want to say that out loud. But it's got to be the clever approach now. You know what, I think that's easy to say when the, you're on the second half of the run and the driver in front of you has made a huge error. Sitting on the line, ready to go for the, the very first run of a top 32 battle against a driver who has, uh, you know, qualified well or is equally capable. Look at these two guys, 14th and 19th. They, they can't afford to give an injury. They can't afford to try and pull out a safe run 
on the first half of the bat. For sure, as he gets Clint Bennett out to lead in, Michael Ryan, Ryan very aggressive from the off here as he goes into the front. Of Clint Bennett coming way too fast here. He's not going to make that work, and they're both going to go really far wide here. That looks to me like Clint Van Oot leading Michael Reinhardt off the track. And I'm just watching, I'm sure you guys are at home, you can just see the pace of Clint Van Oot there was not going to work on that corner. He was coming in way too hot, and he's lost a lot of panels to Michael Reinhardt through the first corner. And to me, and that's only first opinion, it looked like he went in too hot. He's got suspension damage maybe on the back of that car as well. It looks to me like there might have been a hit. It could just be loose body panels. We'll, we'll try and confirm that. But it looks to me like there might be some issues there with the contact from Michael Reinhardt. Reinhardt following him in. That's what you're meant to do in the chase position. And uh, it looked to me like Clint Van Oot, very late initiation. Oh, it was going to be really risky to make that work. Yeah, certainly from the first view there, Dave, it did look as though uh, Van Oort was just uh, pushing that wide, wide line just a little bit too much. And as you say, Michael Reinhardt in the chase position doing exactly what he's told to do by the judges, which is just, you know, emulate the line of the lead driver. And he's not going to be able to tell from where he is that he's uh, how, how far into the into dirt that he's, he's about to go. We watch it one more time here. He initiates like so late compared to most of the other drivers. And look, once he hits this, this, this part mean, here. He's dropped off before he's even got to that first yeah. ever zone. Now, I will say Reinhardt is fairly flying in there as well. You know, he's <laughs> he's overcommitted also. Um, but, it, but is the damage done by the early initiation here from Van Oort? I mean, as you say... A late initiation, sorry, rather. Late, yeah. rather, yeah. But I think that's the thing, Eddie. I mean, he's entering 40 feet later than James Dean and Jack Shannon, so he's, he's taking a big risk. Then again, how hard is it to pick your point when you've never done a lap of the track in the rain before, which I don't think Clint Van Oort has ever done. So very tough to ask these guys to be experts from the off when they've never driven in these conditions. No, and I think what you, when you, what you do see from the likes of Shanahan and Dean is them setting the car up very early and, uh, you know, getting the car into position long before they actually get to that outer zone. But, yeah, we just got know? confirmation from our judging panel that Clint Van out at fault for the collision on the first corner. Going in too hot, went off the track and leading Michael Reihardt with him. Uh, Michael Reihardt was asked, does he need a competition timeout? Reihardt, as advertised, said, as long as there's four wheels on the car, I'll go and give it another run. So they're going off down the track again. Clint Van Oud with a big disadvantage and he has an incomplete. And I'm wondering, is there an issue with that car on the start line? Um, not gonna, just gonna try and read the body language from the start line. They're having a little, little look around, make sure everything's okay. It was a big hit on that first quarter. Yeah, well, they've moved over to Reihardt's car here and uh, oh, maybe they're just explaining. Yeah, there's, de there, there's, there's definitely some conversations being had down there and, uh, you know, hands on the radio, messages being delivered back to uh, Back to the officials so I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to say, remember that little little tidbit of information I gave you that it looked like there was suspension damage on Clint Van Oud's car? Well, I confirmed there is suspension damage on Clint Van Oud's car, and therefore, he cannot compete in the second half of the run. To be honest, it was a tall order as it was, with an incomplete on the first run, but Clint Van Oud out of the conversation. And so basically, yeah, on the, on, the, on the first corner, Clint Van Oud has suspension damage. It just looked to me around the last corner when he was just finishing the run, Something was weird with that car, so it's a steering uh, steering problem, and I'm sure plenty of other arms have been bent with the, all, all the hits there. Yeah, so lots Reihard of hits, and uh, you know, a big rumble off the circuit as well, so not going to do the suspension of that car any favours. Reihard gets ready to leave the line, he just needs to initiate through Yeah, just to initiate through the first corner. He doesn't have to be phenomenal here, he just has to uh, initiate and make sure that he proves to the judges that he can break. And uh, on a day like today, that's, that's, that's enough, I think, to say, can you drift? I'm not so sure. It's pretty difficult out there. So uh, Michael Reihard will go around the circuit. He'll probably hit everything on the way. Uh, I'm trying to figure out, because he didn't get a clean lap there to figure out the conditions, which is the reason he's allowed to do this. And that's standing water. Look how, look how bad it's getting that's there. It's going to be a real problem as, as that progresses. And Michael Reihard spins the car um, as he comes around the last corner. Now, as far as I'm aware, that will be okay. He just needed to initiate, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I did say, can you drift, but only the first corner. Yeah. Not the whole track. Can so you just initiate? Can you just get around? If, it would be lovely uh, at this stage, make it easier for us. But Michael Reihardt, being the only man there for the decision, is going to be pretty confident of which way it's going to go. Uh, and Reihardt, I mean, he, every one of these drivers is, is just like, ugh, this is awful. Yep. I cannot, I mean, I mean, to drive this as a car right now with the conditions is fine, but to try and drift it with your front and rear, you know, tires all over the shop, there's muck, there's tires. I there's... have to disagree with you there, Dave. I don't think just driving this as a 
normal car is even <laughs> it's even something I'd want to do no. or something that's uh, that's possible. But we see just the judges now making it. Michael Ryder, like I don't know what happened. He's I not even know. happy that yeah. he's won. Yeah, there you go. He oh, wins. there we go. He's happy. He's won the battle. He's like I don't know what's happening. Where's my opponent gone? What's going on? And we're just like, let's just scratch that one, go to the top 16. Clint Fenn out, out of competition. And Michael Reihard is, uh, is happy, happy that he is in survival mode. He's got dry rapidly. And it's not the news you want to hear if you're Naoki Nakamura or Michael Reihard because it's getting drier and drier, patchier and patchier, and no one's had any practice, only full wet today. This is going to be two crazy drivers heading into a 75 mile an hour corner with absolutely no iota of what's going to happen next. We've all got to hold our breath and sit back. It's the Czech Republic against Japan. As Naoki Nakamura, the lower qualifier, will sit into the chase position. And it's been working for him from this position, Eddie. This is where you actually want to be. The higher qualifier actually has the disadvantage because you're the first to go into that corner. That's exactly it, Dave. And Nakamura has been waking at work here this weekend in the battles. That's where he's come alive. But Reihardt now in the lead position. Can he find something special? We talked about the track conditions. It's got to get worse before it's going to get better. But with that little drop of sunshine, we should start seeing that track drying out nicely and maybe start to see a little bit more smoke appear from the rear end of these awesome machines. As Reihardt now sends it in, as he's straightens up a little bit, though, as Nakamura dials on the angle in the chase position. Applying the proximity, but Reihardt just not able to get onto that wide line, going very wide, now dropping up onto the curb there. Huge, huge error from Reihardt in the lead position, and Nakamura just trying to pick his moments here to pounce it, to formulate his attack. And they make it across the line, but certainly from Reihardt's point of view, Dave, not the lead run he was hoping for there. No, it looked like, it, to be honest, he was going to go off the track and spin, and he actually managed to keep it going. But Nakamura, again, not over-risking, which I think is a clever way to approach that chase position, especially before you know you, you don't know if it's enough. You know, you don't need to over-commit uh, yourself that you're going to knock. You're going to do something you can't come back from. Reihardt fires into that first corner. Looks like he just gets it a little wide here, but it's not bad. He's on the edge of the track here. He drops out of that outer zone, but a little bit of a straight. And I think he expected the car to wash far more than it did and he just got a lot of grip there as Nakamura fires down the inside this is good proximity from Nakamura playing with Reihardt Reihardt completely misses the outer zone doesn't even go anywhere near it which is a huge deduction from the judges because he's taking no risk and you can see Nakamura just using the handbrake just to transition that car and it, this is Reihardt's biggest mistake he goes way over and it looks to me like he puts two wheels off it may not be two wheels off we may have another look and the judges saying to me it was only one wheel off the track so Reihardt even though he only puts one wheel off the track it's a huge deduction so Nakamura not the perfect position here and you can actually start to see that dry line look at that a little bit of smoke getting kicked up on that last corner the sun is shining but here's the interesting part eddie we talked about it in the in the break between ourselves that the shade of the trees through that first corner as opposed to the sunlight now beaming down on half the course it even makes it more sketchy yeah, well, that's it. Just every... Uh, is, is there any more... E e even a ray of a sunshine, Dave, just uh, doesn't fully fully take away the dangers and, the, you know, the, just the absolute treacherous conditions that we have faced here. It's... Uh, look, I, I think we could be faced with Apache track uh, right up into maybe the final four. Let's just hope that there's no more drops of rain and that the, start, the track starts to get a little bit more predictable for these guys because right now, it's just almost undrivable for them. Yeah, you can see there from the opposite angle, Mike Rard doesn't drop two wheels uh, into the dirt, but, of course, that's why we have the drone angles. That's why we have the multiple angles and of course the judges have an EVS system which means they can look at whatever they want inside outside the car whenever they want and they are happy that Breihardt did not incomplete but he is at a deduction and can Nakamura put a clean lead run in we haven't seen a clean lead run today so let's hope this is one of them yeah I think it's just about making it as tidy as possible as Nakamura now opens up a bit of a gap here over Michael Reihardt as they make their way through and just again Reihardt just you know Racking up those errors, way offline there. Nakamura, though, oh, big straight from Nakamura and almost contact, Dave. Would you believe it? Boat drivers way offline. Nakamura gets up on the curb, car shoots forward. Reihardt's on the opposite side of the track. I don't even know anymore. Yeah, this Nakamura is just so unpredictable. Nakamura's going to see Michael Reihardt in front of him as he finishes the run here and say, well, I'm not sure what happened. And Reihardt got back going again. But that was a weird one. So it looked to me like Nakamura went way too wide, got on the slippy stuff, and he couldn't bring the car back around again. But he didn't realize Michael Reihardt was somehow on the inside of the track when he did it. So we're going to have to have a look at that one uh, in the replay. I've never seen anything quite like that in Riga before, where two drivers on two different tra trajectories, they almost had a head-on collision halfway through the track. Oh, drifting, drifting. You think you've seen it all, and then all of a sudden you've... Nakamura and Reihard crashing head-on nearly halfway through the track, which doesn't make any sense. But uh, two wild drivers, two ambassadors of the sport, and uh, 
you can see Nakamura saying to, to Reihardt, I have no idea what's happened. You have no idea what happened. So let's see, look, Nakamura came through like a rocket ship. But watch this, handbrakes goes way too wide, has to back off completely here, slows down, drives pretty straight, and then all of a sudden goes to the left. And Reihardt's like, oh no. And it's a collision between the two on that side of the track. It is, look at this, Nakamura comes up on the curb, he loses control. That two wheels off has to be, the front wheel is off as well. And then he comes across the track and smashes into Reihardt, who's not expecting the Japanese driver to come back on at that trajectory. Oh, That's one of the craziest crashes I think I've seen in drifting. Just, I mean, it's just mind-boggling how both drivers ended up crashing over at that section. I of the think circuit there's, there's the definitely going to be a photo, up. there's going to be a photo. I'm thinking in this one, so it's going to very much dictate the decision. And here we go, it's for a spot in the top eight. Michael Reihardt gets the win, and Reihardt beats Nakamura here in the top 16. Quickly back to you, Kevin. Yeah, two wheels off. Haven't seen a front wheel off on that zone before. No, and nor have I seen a front wheel off in that zone either, Dave, but that's what it all comes down to. It's an incomplete from Nakamura, unfortunately, and that dictates overall, because while Reichardt had a very, very scrappy lead run on his lead as well, he didn't do anything that constituted as an incomplete, unfortunately, so it all comes down to that two wheels off by Nakamura. Could you actually write it, Dave? I, I, the front wheel off for me now is just one. I, and I, I, the, the shoot across the track, and Reihardt's like, what's happening? And now Reihardt's lifting up Nakamura and saying, stop hitting me on the track in future and Michael Reihardt delighted he waited I'm, I'm pretty sure he does not turn up for that top four spot which means we are now heading to our next top eight battle Yuha Rintanen still in the fight the last finished driver still in the competition will go up against Michael Reihardt and this will be to take on Jack Shanahan in the top four whoever goes through this and uh, Eddie, what happens next, right? You're writing the story here. It already sounds ridiculous. If we'd written the script, people would say it's unrealistic. Now, Rintanen, can he just keep it together in the chase position? He will climb up the championship here. But Michael Reihardt, this is the dream weekend. This is what he's been hunting for, and he's not backing down here. No, Michael Reihardt is back with a vengeance here this weekend, and he's coming to take down you and get that place in the final four. But you and Rintanen might have other ideas as both drivers pile on huge angle. But big straight in there from Michael Reihardt as he over he put too much angle into the car but he get back into it now and you are rented it comes for the door of Michael Reihardt throws it deep into that outer zone and both guys side by side as they cross the line well I'll tell you what Michael Reihardt did make the big error there as outer zone one to two he snapped too much angle in and it looked to me like he almost over-rotated. Rintanen backs off. Let's, let's you know, let Reihardt get back in the mix again. But it looked to me like Michael Reihardt, unforced error in the lead position. You'll see it here on your screens as he fires in. And this looks great for Michael Reihardt. He's got all the pace in the world. He's leaving Yuha Rintanen a little bit for dead. But watch this transition. Way too snappy. Gets on angle here. Boom. That's too much there. Has to straighten the car out. Rintanen has to like sort of back off on the front brake. And he does a great job, Yuha Rintanen, there of staying in it because that car, that... <laughs> E92 was coming up real fast on that inner zone. And after there, not a bad run from either driver, but a lot of handbrake from Michael Reihardt there in a non-deceleration zone as well. So I think this is handing all of the advantage to the Yuha Rintanen and the Finnish driver. will just have to keep it together here in the second half. And then he'll go up against maybe Jack Chan. I'm getting ahead of myself, but think about it. These are the guys battling out for the championship right now. We know McKeever will not compete anymore. We know that... Nicholas Bertans, Nick Nack will go automatically through to the final with a bye run, but the thing is, he's not really in the championship fight, so it's all about Rintanen and all about Shanahan right now for when it comes to points, and it's all going to be about Dwayne McKeever will probably end up finishing fourth regardless, so that's just to keep you guys up to date on the championship standings, but it doesn't matter right now because we've got two crazy drivers coming down the track at over 70 miles an hour as the track drives, Rintanen to lead in Reihardt. Yeah, and here we go, Rintanen fires through the first corner, and Reihardt now getting a little bit out of line, and shallows up into that inside section you uh, puts foot to floor here and starts to pull the gap here as Reihardt cuts the circuit to try and gain some proximity Reihardt goes deep into outer zone 5 and they make contact and a spin Dave it, I think that's contact I think that's Reihardt hitting Rinton in there that's just the first I'm only acting on my gut here and my instincts when I watch it but if you look at the, the characteristics of the car and the way they're moving Rinton and looked like he took a, a bump there as they came through we'll see it more clearly on the replay but as they transition through it looked to me like Reihardt just going that little bit too hot Rinton and though on the handbrake break and then and they're on full throttle is their contact yeah a little bump there 
from Michael Ryder. It's not the place on the track you want to get a bump because you're trying to actually go the opposite direction. And as Rinton then tries to transition, he can't because, well, there's an E92 stopping him. Yeah, look at a little bit of bump there. Oh, he gets very close to the wall here, Rinton. That would have been a scary moment in that GR86 as he heads towards that concrete wall. And both drivers head back down for their result. It will be for a spot in the final four. And almost the other side of the bracket has just shut down with McKeever out of the competition. It looks like we are just going to go straight to the final on the other side. And then we're going to have a top four battle between the winner of this and Jack Shanahan for the final spot in the final. Oh, Eddie. Have uh, we had a clean run? We have contact in every single run for the last four or five battles. Yeah, and you know what? I don't think we're going to get through any of the final few battles, Dave, without contact. This has been absolutely intense. All the drivers, they know how much it means. And guess what? The fact that Peter is out of competition means they know that the championship is up for grabs. They know that they can get their hands on that trophy. And they know that if they just perform here this weekend in these few battles, put everything on the line, that they could be the ones taking the lead into the final two rounds. Yeah, and the judges are going to make a decision on this one. They've had a good deliberation, and it's going to come down to that hit between Yuha Rinton and, and Michael Reihart. Did, did Rinton slow down too much and Reihart hit him because of that, or did Reihart just go too fast and hit him? So that's going to be the decision. On the first run, you can see Michael Reihart does make a major error, but I think that collision is going to be where we decide this one. And Kevin O'Connell having a good debate with the rest of the judges here to see which way they're going to go, and this is where it's all going to come down to. Did Yuha Rinton and slow too much here? Watch the rear of the car. Oh, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Michael Reihart coming too fast. Rinton and going a little bit too slow. That's going to be an interesting one for the judges to call. Hard to say which who's at fault there. I think both drivers making a slight error, but they're going to have to, you know, put blame on someone here for a decision. And Michael Reihart, he's vlogging away there on the stage. He's almost in tears at this stage as we get a decision. Who's going to go through? It's Yuha Rinton. Yuha Rinton gets the win. And the finish fans in attendance absolutely light up the line. Down. The homies stay round, get a plate now. With LO World, A kind fellow, sir. I'm in a work so hard, I'm on my way now.